Hi everyone, have you ever needed to track a schedule in your project or track the tasks that you're working on? Well, one of the best ways to do that is with a Gantt chart. And this is the absolute best Gantt chart that I have ever come across and the template that I've created that people ask me for all the time. And there are many reasons for this. First of all, it's created in Excel, but it actually looks like it's created in Microsoft Project. So you don't have to go and buy Microsoft Project. You can actually create this particular template here and it will look almost exactly like it is and actually function even a little bit better than the one in Microsoft Project anyway. The second thing you'll see is it's got a nice line here for the current date so you can always see where you are. And you can also change the date. So if we say the 2nd of February 22, then it will update the calendar for us. And that calendar we can, um, can move you know, left and right very easily. Also, it will update our Gantt chart bars if we just change the details on the left here. So if we say the 20th of February, 20, uh, 2022, then that will change that particular one. Also, a little bit more, if we say it's in progress, then it will, uh, it will change the look of the bar. And if we change the percentage done, then it will, it will update that on our bar as well. Now, if we change that back to complete, it'll give us a nice golden, golden thing at the end there. It also shows us this beautiful diamond for our complete date. So that's really, really cool. It shows the total work days that we're working on the item for. And lastly as well, if we say that we're blocked, it will actually change the color of these items so that, uh, so that we can really clearly see that those items are blocked and call those out. All in all, like I said, this is the best Gantt chart that I've ever come across and people ask me for it all the time. Let's delve into this and create this in Excel. It's gonna be a whole bunch of fun. Now, the first thing we're going to do is just do the general coloring and framing of our Gantt chart and we're going to speed that up ever so slightly just so we can get into the really good stuff, all the formulas and the, the formatting that will create the Gantt chart itself for you. We will be using this particular date as an input to all of our calendar items over here. And of course, we'll have our number, we'll have our activity, we'll have who it's assigned to, we'll have our start and end dates, We'll have the work days that we've been working on it for. We'll have the status, so is it blocked or is it complete or is it in progress? And we'll have our percentage done. Now the first part we're going to create is the actual calendar, so the days, the weeks, the months and the years, and that will feed into everything else that we do. Now there's a few different ways that you can do this. First of all, we could just say equals, uh, equals this particular date and then that will be correct. And we want to format that cell and just make sure that that's the way that we want it. So, if we go to custom, we can actually just have one day and three months. And if we do that, that will come up quite nicely for us and we can carry that across all the way through. Now that's one way to do it. And if you want to get a little bit more fancy, there is another way. And what I've done here is I've just used month and weekday. So this way it will always start at the beginning of the month for us and our formatting will be really, really nice. So that's the formula there, uh, but you can use the other way if that is simpler for you. Now, once we've done that, our next one, we just want to add seven days. So this one plus seven every time, seven days. If we take that bar and drag that across, then that will keep adding those seven days for us and we can keep going until we've got a full year's worth. And you can go beyond that even more if you do want to. Now, when we're actually creating the months, that's a different story. What we need to do is, as we know, there's around four weeks in every month, but every so often there are five weeks in a month. So what we want to do is just merge and center these four, four weeks and we'll do that again. So now we've got two four weeks and one five week. And we're just going to copy that and paste that all the way across so that that, does, uh, that's ex that carries across for the rest of our year. But we also want to take this whole row and we want to just lift that up so that that matches, uh, matches up above as well in the years. Now for our months, what we want to do is say we want to equal the second week that we're looking at just so that it doesn't get, uh, you know, you know, it doesn't get thrown out by any weeks that flow over. So if we say that, and what we want to do is format our cells and we actually want that to be custom just to three months. So M, M, M. And if we say, okay, that's going to give us the month every time. Now we can carry that across. And as you see, that'll be taking it from the second week again. Now we can copy all of those across for the rest of the year. Now, lastly, we want to do the years and we can do the same thing. So if we say this equals the, um, the second one again, 
and it's saying January. So what we want to do is format that and we actually just want to say these are years. So four years and if we say yes to that, now that can continue all the way across. Now you may want to take some of these out or you may want to actually color these a little bit differently and that is completely up to you. And now we've got our beautiful calendar and if we go to view and take off the grid lines, we'll see that that's looking quite good. But we actually want to put some, uh, some of those lines back in. So for our purposes, we're going to select all of this and we want to just go to more borders. So for more borders, what we can actually do is maybe some nice light lines uh, and we can make them all the way through. And now that's starting to look really, really good. Let's do the same for the other parts of our table really quickly, again, using the more borders tool. Now that we've got that, let's do our uh, incremental borders for inside our Gantt chart as well. And we'll just make those a little bit lighter. We'll put some of our activities in and some of our numbering. And when we do that, we want that to be over to the right. So we'll make all of these over to the right. And we just want to increase the indent just a little bit so that that looks really, really nice. Let's do it for the other one too. Make sure that that's good. Now we've got our dates. So we can place our dates in here, but we want to format these cells so that they are, you know, so that they look in the right way that we want them to. And we just got one D, three M's and two Y's, so day, month and year. Or you can change this if, uh, if it's an American date for you, you can obviously do uh, month to day and then you know year. Now we want to figure out the exact number of working days that we're going to be working on these particular items. So let's color this first of all, uh, just a nice, we've got our normal color. Let's make it a, a, a darker color for us here, maybe with the text a little bit white. But the formula that we want is going to be this. So we're going to use network days to figure out just the number of working days between the start and the end date. Um, and also, if that area is blank, then we don't want to return anything at all. So that's just another little trick uh, so that we, you know, so that it still looks nice at the end of the day. We can copy that all the way down. And as you can see, the ones without anything in them don't show up at all. And that's exactly what we want. Now we actually want to use a drop down for our statuses. So what we want to do here is first of all, just put the status list uh, down the bottom of our Gantt chart. So we've got not started, in progress, blocked and complete. Now for these particular sections, we'll select the whole, the whole column and we want to go to data and we want to say data validation. So I'll just go there again, drop down and it's data validation is what we want. We want to allow a list and the source of that list, we actually want between these, these areas here, select those areas um, that we've put our list items and click OK. Now that we've done that, we should be able to select from in progress to blocked to complete uh, and any of those that we want for our particular Gantt chart. Now, one other thing we want for this is just to do some conditional formatting for our blocked statuses. So when we say conditional formatting, we'll say a new rule and we want our format only cells that contain specific text and we'll say that they are blocked. Now, when we format that, we want the fill, we can make that maybe just a, a nice orange so that it does stand out. And if we say okay and okay, then when we say that our item is blocked, it should change. There we go, that's looking really, really good. And that will stand out for all of us uh, so that we can see when something is blocked and we need to swarm around it and problem solve. Next, we're going to put in some percentages. And as you can see, uh, a percentage is between zero and one, so 0 0.9, 0 0.4. And we just want to format that correctly as well. So if we, if we just click on the percentage button up here, then that's going to change it for us. And now we've got beautiful percentages for the percentage complete. Now that's going to impact our Gantt chart and it's time for us to get into that Gantt chart now. First of all, we're going to select the, the top left one and what we're actually going to do is say, if uh, the end date, so if the end date matches the current date here, then what we want to return is a U. And if there's nothing, so if it doesn't match, then we just want to return nothing, so blank, blank text. And we want to return a U 
for a very, very important reason. And that is we're going to select the Wingdings font. Now a U in wing Wingdings is that beautiful diamond shape that we saw. So if we select this and, uh, and put this all the way across, there we have it. Now we can see that's the actual end date. So that's the date that we're expecting and it shows up nicely on our Gantt chart. Let's just select the whole area and put that in the middle and the center maybe reduce the size ever so slightly, but not too much. And now we can see that beautiful a diamond shape. Let's select all of these and drag them down as well. And now we have all of the different end dates for our particular items. So how cool is that? That's the first step. Now let's get to putting our Gantt bars in. First of all, let's put the, let's put the actual today's bar in. So what we're actually looking for is um, basically whether today equals this particular bar. And so once we've got that, that's going to be our conditional formatting. So let's take that, let's select all of our area. We'll say new rule and we'll say use a formula to determine. So here is that formula again, just starting with the top, top left and K4 is that first date that we're looking for. So we actually want this uh, border, we want a border, nice left hand side border and the color can be a nice deep green I think so that we know that that is our day and if we select OK and OK then now as you can see the day that I'm filming this or the week that I'm filming this so how cool is that? That's our first step. Now let's do the bars. And the first bar again, let's just showcase how we will do this. This is the formula here. And what we're looking at here is if we've got our start date and our end date, and if that uh, actually matches up to one of these weeks, then we want to color that particular bar. So that particular bar here. So we're going to use this formula and we're going to use it for our conditional formatting. Again, we'll select the whole area. We'll go to conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula to determine and put that particular one with, with and and weekdays in it. We want to format this maybe to what sort of fill shall we have? Maybe a more colors, maybe a nice light blue. You can choose any color you like, of course, but if we click OK and OK again, then now we have our bars automatically filled out according to the dates that we've selected on the left hand side here. How cool is that? But we're not finished yet because we want to see the percentage done. So we want that to be accurate as well. Now for our percentage complete, it's a little bit more complicated and we're going to use the AND function and the weekday function and we're going to multiply that by the percentage done. So between the start and the end and then multiply that by the percentage done. So 40% and that will give us the colored, the amount of bars that we want to according to that percentage complete. Let's turn that into our conditional formatting. Now we'll make this a little bit darker so it does stand out and if we select OK, now we can see and you can change that to be any color you like as well. So we might change that color just a tiny little bit. But we also want to see when an item is complete. So let's look at our complete formula here. So we're going to use uh, the AND function as well. And basically if, it's, uh, if it equals that date and the status also equals complete as we've got here, then we're going to color it that nice golden color. So we take that formula and let's use that for our conditional formatting. This is the formula that we'll, that we'll put in here and we'll put like a nice, just that nice golden color here. So if we click OK, now as we can see the ones that are complete have got that beautiful end date for us. And we can change that to in progress and it changes back. Or we can change this to complete. Oh, that one won't show up. Maybe this one is not blocked anymore. And now it's complete instead. And we'll put that to 100% complete. And now we can clearly see it. Isn't this great? It's starting to look so, so good. But there is one last thing and that is our blocked uh, status here. So let's quickly do that. And for our blocked formula, we're actually only going to do the sections that are complete. So we're just going to change the color only for the, for the percentage that has been done. So it's a little bit more complicated. But as you can see, we're looking for the word blocked uh, in our status and if that's the case then we're going to match it up with the between the start and end date and see if that matches the date on here and if it does then we're going to color in between the uh, percentage done from start to the to the end of the percentage done so using this particular formula again if we select that and go to our conditional formatting 
And what we want is maybe we want that to be that orange color as well. Now if we click OK and apply, now we can see the one that is blocked, here it is very nicely. Uh, so that's great, that shows us very, very clearly. If we change that to be in progress, that changes back for us. Now let's say this one is now blocked, that's going to change it to be blocked and we can clearly see it and everyone can see that it's blocked and we need to get around there and really try and figure it out. One last thing, let's select K6, go to view and let's freeze the panes. And now when we scroll down, we can scroll down as much as we want and we can also scroll across as much as we want. And now you and I have created this amazing Gantt chart, something that will really, really impress your team, impress your bosses, and basically will have everyone asking you, where can I get this so that I can use it for myself? I hope you take it and create something amazing in your own organization, in your startup, in your business or your company. I've really enjoyed spending the time with you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.